Words of Hope, proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ in the languages of the world's peoples. Dear listeners, you are live on Spirit FM 96.6 and you are reverently welcome. And thank you for tuning in to listen to this wonderful broadcast brought to you by Words of Hope Ministries Uganda. Good news, no boundaries. My name is Eric to bring it to your utmost attention and saying you are loved, cherished beyond what the world has described you. Yes, the world needs to learn to separate people from their problems. This will teach us to care for our neighbors other than stereotyping them because of hearsay. Yes, God loves you, but hate sin that reigns in your body. If you could surrender your life to Jesus, he will make you whole again, forgive all your sins at no cost, and give you a new name in his kingdom other than the name the world has tagged you with. Isn't that great? Have you ever lived with people who are rich in mood swings? <laughs> And yet, they are Christians. Yes, even Christians have mood swings. Such people disorganize united groups. If it is a meeting, everyone will leave asking questions, what's wrong with sister so-and-so? If it's a worship team, you might end up not even singing because sister so is emotionally unstable today. <laughs> if it comes to a married woman with mood swings, ho, oh, men, they end up choosing to come back late home. What about an office madam boss with mood swings? As a Christian, how do you handle your emotions so that they don't disrupt your neighbors? At the end of this broadcast, you would have discovered how to handle your emotions with care. Well, this is a contagious topic. Everybody knows how to handle their mood swings left, right, here and there. I introduce to you a gentleman with me here to handle a topic entitled Emotional Stability from our series Living a Consecrated Life. He is a legal practitioner, a preacher, a father, and a mentor full of the word of truth and from Hope Fellowship. He is our brother Paul Agaba. Let's all give him a mighty applause as he comes to speak to us the word of God in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. My name is Paul Agaba. I'm from Hope Fellowship. I'm so blessed to be here once again to share the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus tells the disciples and also tells us that the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. Praise Jesus. So every word that you get from the word of God, it is spirit and it is life. That's why the scripture says that all scripture is God-breathed, useful for teaching, correction, that the man of God may be furnished for every good work. Praise the Lord. So every time you're hearing the word of God, it is changing your life. It is changing your heart. It is changing every aspect of your life because the word of God is life. I want to thank God for words of hope, for this wonderful opportunity to share this wonderful gospel, to share the good news of, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is in the word of God that we are established, that we're able to grow and be able to, to stand and become the witnesses of Jesus Christ, unashamed. Praise the Lord. Yeah, so I want to thank you so much for listening, my dear listener. Uh, we are continuously building on our theme, living a consecrated life in Christ Jesus. The first time I, I introduced this theme, uh, the last time I talked about I talked about having a renewed mind, and I, I took some time to explain that our lives are transformed when our minds are renewed by the word of God. As the scripture says in Romans chapter 12, from verse 1 to 2, that offer your body as a living sacrifice. And then it says that do not conform to the standards of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Praise the Lord. So your life is transformed by the renewing of your mind. When you change the way you think, your life is going to be transformed. You see, your transformation is dependent on your ability to renew your mind with the word of God. David says that I have hidden your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. David understood that it was through hiding God's word in his heart that his life would be transformed to the extent that he would not sin against God. Praise the Lord. So we need to have our minds renewed according to the word of God. Yes, people have told you stuff. Yes, people have spoken ill against you. Yes, people have told you you are ugly, but the word of God 
God says something better about you. Yes, people have said your family is poor, but God's word says something about you. God's word says that you are you are blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. So I want to encourage you to be transformed by the renewing of your mind and you renew your, your mind with the word of God. Praise Jesus. Well, today I want to talk about emotional stability. Praise Jesus. That is what I want to share with us, continuously building on our theme, living a consecrated life. Our emotions need to be stable. Praise the Lord. Your emotions need to be stable. Praise Jesus. Your emotions should not be high and low. <laughs> there should be a balance. Your emotions need to be stable. And you may be, you may be asking yourself, what are emotions? Emotions are feelings. It is the way we feel. Some of the good emotions that I can talk about are, for example, love. You feel you, you have love in your heart. There is joy, you know. You feel the joy of the Lord. You feel happy, you know. You feel happy. Uh, you feel peaceful. You feel serene, you know. Or you, or you feel composed. That is an emotion. Praise Jesus. You know, those are some of the good emotions, the way we feel. The way you feel. You know, you may feel excited. That is an emotion. You, you Somebody does for you something good. You're excited. Somebody surprises you. You know, <laughs> for example, if you are there and uh, you know on your birthday somebody just walks onto you and gives you a khaki, you become happy, you become excited. So it is how you feel. Praise Jesus! It is how you feel. Yeah, I, our emotions. Our emotions means the way we feel, our feelings. Praise the Lord. However, there are also some negative emotions, such as fear, such as worry, such as anxiety, such as shame. Sometimes we feel shameful when when people have done certain things to us or said certain things to us. You know, but the Bible says that those who look unto the Lord shall. Their faces are radiant and they shall not be they shall not have shame. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. So sometimes we feel shameful, sometimes we feel angry, sometimes we feel frustrated, you know. Those are all em embarrassed. Sometimes we feel embarrassed. Those are emotions. Praise Jesus. Those are the emotions, some of the negative emotions. But God wants us to be stable. In the positive emotions, in the godly emotions. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, For the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. I love that Paul says that again as such there is no law. Why? Because the fruit of the Spirit, they are governed by the Holy Spirit. They're not born or they're not, they're not released or they're not, they're not born out of obligation, but it is about the Holy Spirit working in you to bear the fruit of the Spirit. Praise Jesus. So even Galatians goes ahead to explain some of these emotions, the love, the joy, the peace, the patience, and God wants us to be to be stable in those emotions, to be stable, to have constant joy. Praise the Lord. No matter what you face, no matter what you go through, you can have constant joy. And I want to tell you, joy is defined as inner gladness. Praise the Lord. Regardless of outward circumstances, you know, you can be going through something that, that is tough, but you have the joy of the Lord in you. The Bible says that we are pressed but not crushed. We are persecuted but not abandoned. We are struck down but not destroyed. Why? Because you have the joy of the Lord in you. Because you have this constant assurance that God is with you. Praise Jesus. So God is calling us to bear the fruit. To bear, to bear the fruit of joy, but also to be constant, to have a constant joy. Just let nothing, let nothing take away your joy. You see, one thing I can tell you is that the enemy is, is after your joy. He's after your peace. He wants you to lose peace. He's after your peace. He doesn't want you to be peaceful. He wants you to be confused. You know, he's after, he, he's after your joy. He wants, he wants you to be sad. He wants you to be moody. He wants you to be frustrated. And yet you see, when you look at Nehemiah, Nehemiah is building the the wall. They are building the wall with, with, with his men. They are going through difficult oppositions, you know. Tobias, you know, some of those guys discourage him. They tell him that, that the wall that you are building, even a fox will step on it and it will fall. But you see, in Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10, the Bible says... 
Nehemiah says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Let me tell you, child of God, when you don't have joy, you don't have strength. When you don't have joy, you don't have strength. There's nothing you're going to achieve if you don't have the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And one thing is that it is not your joy. It is the joy of the Lord. You see, sometimes we have to differentiate between joy and happiness. Happiness is based on, on outward circumstances, on what people do for you. If somebody dies for you something good, you are happy. If somebody gives you a good compliment and says you are smart, you feel happy. But later on, this, the, the, the feelings change because circumstances have changed. However, joy is inner gladness based on your knowledge based on your approval as a child of God because God approves you because God approves you because God loves you that gives you the joy of the Lord hallelujah the Bible says that we in all these things Romans chapter 8 8 verse 37 that know in all these things we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us when you understand that God loves you that Christ loves you unconditionally you are going to have the joy of the Lord and because you have the joy of the Lord your joy in the Lord should be constant irrespective of what you go through, irrespective of the pain that you go through, maintain the joy. Why? Because joy is inner gladness. It is some gladness that comes from within. This is what uh, the Bible talks about, constant joy. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17. Verse 17. This is what Habakkuk is, is proclaiming. Uh, Habakkuk says in, in Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17, the Bible says that though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stores, yet, verse 18, Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 18, the Bible says, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. Praise the Lord. Yet I will rejoice. He's saying that fig tree has not budded and then there are no grapes on the vines and then no, the, even the olive crop has failed then the fields have produced no food and then there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stores but verse 18, this is where the, the story changes around. Habakkuk says that, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. Praise the Lord. <laughs> he says that I will rejoice. Child of God, I want to encourage you to rejoice. No matter what you go through, rejoice. Praise the Lord. Be constant in joy. Praise the Lord. Let your joy be constant. No matter what you face on the outside, remain joyful. Why? Because you know God unconditionally loves you. And because he unconditionally loves you, you are going to, you are overcoming. You are going to overcome whatever is coming against you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. The Bible says in James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4, that my brethren, count it all joy. <laughs> Once again, you see what is what Paul is now telling us. That my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Praise the Lord. In the book of James, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Can you imagine? You are falling into a trial, but, but, but a man is telling you, count it all joy. <laughs> That's what James is telling us. This is James. James is telling us that count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be that that you may be perfect, complete, and lacking nothing. Praise the Lord. James is telling us that count it all joy. <laughs> he didn't say count it all tears, or or count it. Uh, count it doomed <laughs> when you go through trials. No, he says count it all joy. Praise the Lord. Meaning that there is a place where we can rejoice even in our in our trials. The Bible says that you have turned my morning into dancing. This is what Joseph declares when he has been sold to Egypt and his brothers have come and, and they are begging for food. Joseph tells them Joseph tells them that what you meant for evil, God turned it around for my good. Praise the Lord. That a minister tried that Joseph went through it was working together for his good so he did not lose his confidence the Bible says that do not lose this confidence for it shall be richly rewarded praise the Lord do not lose your joy because it shall be richly rewarded the Bible says in Psalm 30 verse 5 that though the sorrow may last for the night though the sorrow may last for the night joy comes in the morning praise the Lord meaning that there you must have the joy of the Lord you must have the joy of the Lord you must have consistent joy irrespective of what you go through praise the lord the devil wants to see you cry when you cry the devil laughs when you laugh the devil cries so keep that joy no matter what you face 
Keep that joy. Somebody said a statement that false joy is better than genuine depression. <laughs> false joy is better than genuine depression. Sometimes you feel bad. Sometimes you feel you are sunken. Sometimes you feel frustrated. Don't stop smiling. Praise the Lord. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. You see, every time you, every time you walk in joy, you are walking in the strength of the Lord. And because you walk in the strength of the Lord, you are going to overcome. You're overcoming whatever is coming against you. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we thank God. So we're talking about emotional stability. Emotional stability is the capacity to maintain one's emotional balance even under stressful circumstances. Praise the Lord. It is the capacity to maintain to maintain one's emotional balance under stressful circumstances. It is the opposite of emotional instability. Emotionally stable people tolerate all stresses and strains of day-to-day living without becoming emotionally upset, anxious, nervous, tense, or angry. You see, the Bible says that be angry, but do not let the sun go down on your anger. Praise the Lord. The Bible says that, that, uh, that human anger does not bring out the righteousness that God requires. Praise the Lord. Emotional stability is about not allowing outward circumstances to rob you of your inner joy. Praise the Lord. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The Bible says in Job chapter 1 verse 19 to 20, when, when the messengers were bringing the bad news, they were saying your children are dead, your cattle have been destroyed, your sheep are gone, everything is gone. This is what the Bible says in Job chapter 1 verse 19 to 20. The Bible says that Job at this, at the hearing of, of the bad news, Job got up to his robe shaved his head then he fell to the ground in worship so much as they were bringing bad news to job his response was worship let me tell you you cannot worship unless you have joy unless you have the joy of the lord unless you you know in your heart god unconditionally loves you praise the lord what is going to cause you to worship god it is because you know that god unconditionally loves you because you you know that irrespective of what you are going through irrespective Irrespective of the pain that you are going through, irrespective of the rejection you are going through, God loves you. And because God loves you, He's able to deliver you through it. Praise the Lord. So that is where we draw our joy from because we know God unconditionally loves us, irrespective of what we go through. God is with us. The Bible says, even though you go through the fire, I'll be with you. Even though you go through the water, I'll be with you. Why? Because God unconditionally loves you. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. So the Bible says, the Bible says that. Job, when, when he, re, he, he received this bad news, when he receives the bad tidings, the Bible says he shaves his head and then he, 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 he worships. Praise the Lord. He had that inner joy. He knew that God loved him. And then he goes ahead and says that naked I came into this world. Naked I will return to the Father. You give and you take away. But praise be to the Lord. But blessed be the name of the Lord. And it is what you face. Can you still say that blessed be the name of the Lord? It takes emotional stability. It takes emotional st- stability to be able to worship God when you're going through pain. It, is, it takes emotional stability to continue to pray, to continue to serve God, to continue to to. To, to, to do the things that you support, to love your wife, to love your children, irrespective of what you are going through. You see, when you are led by emotions, you are going to hate people who have not even hurt you. You see, there is a saying that hurting people hurt people. Hurting people hurt people. Sometimes when, you, when, we, when we are hurt, we want to, uh, the response is that we also want to hurt other people. We want people to feel, to feel the pain that we feel, you know. Praise Jesus. God is calling us to be emotionally stable. God wants you to be emotionally stable in the good emotions, not in the bad emotions. Not say, I want to be, I want to be emotionally stable in anger. No, that's not of God. Praise the Lord. That will lead you to death. That will lead you to this depression. People commit suicide because they are, they are emotionally stable in the wrong emotions you know some people want to be sad they want to be sorrowful for year in year out yet the bible says that that those are sorrow may last for the night joy comes in the morning meaning there is a place where god has to turn your sorrow into joy praise jesus there is a place where god has to turn your sorrow into joy praise jesus hallelujah so i want to encourage you i want to encourage you no matter what you face no matter what you go through no matter the circumstances that are coming up against you let him have emotional stability 
Praise Jesus. Be stable in your emotions. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says in, a, in, a, in, a, in, in, in Psalm chapter 112, verse 7, this is what the right, a righteous man, the Bible says that they will have no fear of bad news. Their hearts are steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Their hearts. You see, if you are emotionally stable, you not fear bad news. Yes, bad news will come. Things, bad things will happen. But God will turn the situation around. We don't say that people don't go through circumstances. Yes, if you don't go through circumstances, then what is God going to deliver you from? Praise the Lord. We all go through circumstances. We go through, we go through stressing moments. We go through seasons. We go through the wilderness. Praise the Lord. We go through lack. We go through, we get, we get sickness and disease. We get, we get, we get financial problems. We all go through these circumstances, but yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Why? Because we have the joy of the Lord in our hearts. We know that the Lord is with us. And because the Lord is with us, he cares about us. And because we know that the Lord is with us, we know that he carries our burdens. We know the story is going to change. We know that what we see is temporary. It is not permanent. Praise the Lord. What you see is temporary. It is not permanent. That's why the Bible says, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 from verse 17 to 18. The Bible says, for our light afflictions, which which is but for a moment, worketh for us a, a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Why we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things Things which are which are not seen are eternal. Praise the Lord. The things that you see, the things that you look at, the circumstances that you are going through, you can see them. But I'm here to tell you that today, I want to encourage you today that whatever you are going through and you are able to see, it is temporary, meaning it is going to pass away. Just like the night turns into day. Let me tell you, just like the night turns into day, even your circumstance is going to turn around for the glory of God. Praise the Lord. It is temporary. Night is not permanent. It just takes a few hours. And before you know it, the sun, the sun comes forth. So I want to encourage you. I want to encourage that whatever you see, whatever you see, it is, it is temporary. It is going to change what you are going through. It is temporary. You could be single today. Tomorrow you'll be married. You could be broke today. God will provide for you. Your bank account could have zero shillings. Tomorrow God is going to do great things. The Bible says that consecrate yourself today because tomorrow the Lord will do wonderful things among us. Joshua chapter 3 verse 5. Praise the Lord. So whatever you're going through, it is temporary. Yes, you are there. Yes, you're being rejected. Somebody is going to love you. Praise the Lord. Yes, you are sick. Tomorrow you're going to be healed. What you're going through, it is, it is temporary. Praise the Lord. That's why your emotions must be stable, knowing that, that, knowing that what you are going through is temporary. You're just simply going from one place of glory to another. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. So uh, before we conclude, these are some of the indicators that show that you are emotionally unstable. Number one, rapid changes in mood. Hey, when you have your mood's changing every minute. Then fluctuating feelings about people who have hurt you. Then minor things trigger your anger. That, that shows that you're emotionally unstable. Present occurrences trigger past memories or past pain. You avoid to talk about the past that hurt you. You know, you lack inner joy. Your happiness is based on outward circumstances and compliments of other people. When you have impulsive behavior... You know, uh, having having impulsive behaviors, you just you quickly rush to make decisions. You know, based on your feelings. You know, agitation or displaying anger, anxiety or moodiness. These are all these are all indicators that you have that you have you are emotionally unstable, withdrawing or isolation from others, feeling hopeless or feeling being overwhelmed or worthless. When you feel you're overwhelmed or worthless, constantly blaming others for your pain. That is emotional instability. You know. Finding comfort in addictions that shows that your emotions are unstable. Constant feelings of bitterness, complaining and having feelings of discontentment. Those are some of the things that show that your emotions are unstable. Praise Jesus. So how do we maintain how do we maintain emotional stability? Number one, learn to trust God in all circumstances. Learn. Learn to trust God in all circumstances. Learn to trust God. Whatever happens, trust God in all circumstances. Trust him that he is with you. And because he is with you, he has a good plan for you, a plan to prosper you, not to harm you, a plan to give you a hope and a future. So trust God in all circumstances. By the way, let me tell you, one of the greatest answer to life problems lies in trusting God. I'll say that again. The greatest 
answer to life situations or life problems lies in trusting God. When you trust God, you rely on Him. You know, He's working out all things for your good. Just be emotionally stable. Then learn to surrender your emotions to God. He say, you can say, Lord, today I feel so bad. Today I feel, I feel angry but I surrender it to you. May you turn my emotions for your good. May you turn my bad emotions into good emotions. God can turn your sorrow into joy. God can turn your anger into joy. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, choose to be led by the Spirit of God. The Bible says that those who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Number four, always pray when you feel agitated or anxious. The Bible says that in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, that, that do not be anxious about anything, but in in prayer and supplication, make your request known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart in Christ Jesus. Number five, cultivate a grateful heart and focusing on the positive aspects of life. Praise Jesus. Cultivate a grateful heart. Be grateful. Be grateful for the things that God has done for you. Yes, certain things are not working out right now, but be grateful for what God has done before. Praise the Lord. David says in Psalm 77 verse 11 that I'll remember your miracles of old. Praise the Lord. So remember the things God has done for you and be grateful that God came through for you. And he, if he came through for you in the past, he is going to come through for you even today. Praise the Lord. Number six, practice forgiveness. The reason why your emotions are not stable when you look at certain people when you you've been happy but all of a sudden when you look at this guy you remember he hurt you when you see him when you see his pictures when you see his text messages you feel bad why it is because you have not forgiven them when you forgive people your emotions are going to be stable about them your emotions are going to be sorted about them praise jesus so be be emotionally stable practice forgiveness forgive people let go forgive and let go choosing forgiveness letting go of past hearts and seeking reconciliation can lead to emotional healing and freedom. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Number five, number seven, self-care. Learn to care of you, for yourself. Learn to care for yourself. Sometimes we, we are hurt because we spend time caring for other people and then people disappoint us. Take some time and care for yourself. Praise the Lord. Do something that makes you happy. Buy for yourself something that makes you happy. Praise the Lord. Care for yourself. Care for yourself. You know, some people earn a lot of money, but then you find that it's even hard for them to even buy for themselves a good pair of shoes. Care for yourself. Take yourself out. Go to a nice place. Go and eat in a good restaurant. Care for yourself. Because the Bible says that love your neighbor as you love yourself. Praise the Lord. So if you do not love yourself, it's going to be hard for you to love other people. Praise the Lord. So much as you love other people, also love yourself. Praise Jesus. May God bless you. Thank you so much for listening. And I know that God is helping us to live a life of emotional stability. Thank you so much for listening to this wonderful message about emotional stability. But this message does not make sense to you if you don't have a personal relationship with Christ Jesus. Because Christ is a source of our joy. He is a source of our emotional stability. So if you have never given your life to Jesus Christ, I just want you to say these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, today I have heard your word. I confess with my mouth and I believe with my heart that you died and you rose again. Today, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of my sins and make me your child. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have said that prayer, you are born again because by the mouth you confess and by the heart you believe and you receive salvation. So find a local church, a Bible teaching church that you can be part of and continue to grow in your salvation. May God bless you. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening. I hope you are feeling better. Thank you, Paul, for such an inspiring message. My name is Eric. This message has been brought to you by Words of Hope Ministries Uganda. For more information, call 0752-068-005, 0752-068-005. And we are as well available on Facebook and YouTube pages, Words of Hope Ministries. Subscribe like and comment. May God keep you in perfect inner peace, health and wealth. Have a great night. Pathways of thought Formed as I think of you 
So I meditate on your everlasting truth. I will conform to all that you want for me. Cause you are my God and your grace has set me free. In view of all that. Sacrifice. I set my mind. 